This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing you a brand new company. If you're looking to get into technology, this is the company to get into. We're talking no other than Ocean Thermal Energy Corp. They trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol CPWR, very undervalued at 20 cents a share. They are in pre-revenues, but that's about to change. With us today is the CEO of that company. He's going to tell us what's going on over there and and how they're doing is Jeremy Feekins. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Good morning, Everett. Thank you for having me. Ocean Thermal Energy Corporation. Who are you guys? What What do you do? Well, Ocean Thermal Energy Corporation builds uh, and operates clean hydrothermal energy plants using a technology known as Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion, or OTEC. Um, we, we trace our roots back to 1988, uh, when the um, company was a research um, establishment uh, working with uh, the U.S. government, Department of Energy, and at the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii, uh, developing uh, these kinds of technologies. Uh, we, have, uh, current, we have offices in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, Northern Virginia, uh, uh, in the Bahamas, and also the U.S. Virgin Islands. You know, one of the things I was doing my research on, which it kind of blew me away, 844 million people lack access to uh, safe water sources. Uh, th- that uh, number was staggering for me. Yes, it's really, it's really shocking, uh, especially in this day and age. And one of the things about um, OTEC, uh, our technology, uh, um, whether you're using the technology to create electricity or whether you're using it to create uh, cooling for large buildings, uh, is the fact that both the technologies produce an abundant amount of fresh water. Uh, that water can be used for drinking, for agriculture, for fish farming. And again, this has all been proven at the Natural Energy Laboratory in Hawaii, uh, where, our re- where our researchers actually worked on that technology. You know, that's what I was reading about. And your technology is really fascinates me. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I misstate anything here. You guys look for warm climate water. You take that water, you bring it in, then you bring it down to create steam. And that steam generates a generator. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Um, so uh, in tropical and subtropical regions of the world, uh, these are places where uh, there's a lot of uh, warm seawater, uh, surface water. Uh, we look for about 80 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in order to uh, access that heat and use that as a source to boil a working fluid, uh, which, as you quite rightly point out, Everett, turns to steam, and that drives the turbine generator. And then we use uh, cold seawater drawn up from the depths of the ocean and use that to uh, cool the steam back to its liquid state, and the cycle is continued. And the interesting thing about that is that this cycle is known as the Rankine cycle. The Rankine cycle has been around since the 1800s. It was actually the underpinning of the steam engine. And it's the same power cycle that's used with oil and coal and nuclear power plants, except, of course, you know, in our case, we're using the solar energy that's trapped in the ocean uh, as our heat source. So we're not burning anything. There's no noxious chemicals or environmental impact Uh, from the electricity that we produce. My guest today is Jeremy Feekins. He is the CEO of Ocean Thermal Energy Corp. They trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol CPWR, very undervalued at 20 cents a share. Jeremy, let me ask you this. Uh, Virgin Islands, you guys got your, uh, your regulatory approval for your plant site there. You plan on generating uh, uh, electricity for about 400 people of residents there, and the project is 700 million. Bring us up to speed. Where are we at in that process? Um, That's a great question, and uh, we are very, very excited about the U.S. Virgin Islands and our OTEC Eco Village, as we call it, project. Um, As you point out, we've got regulatory approval from the Public Services Commission to be a qualified facility, which means we can build our OTEC plants subject to the zoning and permitting and the environmental uh, work that we will have to do. Uh, But we have uh, designed the master plan. Uh, We have uh, identified the land. Uh, We are working uh, with the owners of that land. Um, We have also uh, just um, appointed um, a fellow by the name of Gil Lyons to our advisory board 
Uh, Gil is a uh, co-founder of the Sky Institute for the Future. Uh, this is an organization which looks at projects like ours and sees where they can provide benefit and value. And we're very pleased to be associated with that group uh, because uh, they have already designed a, uh, a resort, a sustainable resort in Belize. Of course, they don't have the OTEC power like we do. Uh, but when we're finished with the OTEC Eco Village, which is probably about two years in the making, uh, this will be the world's first community that is completely carbon neutral. Uh, there are no emissions that will be emitted from the OTEC Eco Village. Uh, the power will be supplied sustainably, the water the same way. And at the OTEC Eco Village, we will uh, introduce uh, examples of the fish farming, the agriculture, uh, the bottled water facility, all these things that have been proven before. But this is going to be a world first, and it's, and it's a great vision because everybody knows that we really need to do something like this and to uh, prove to the world that OTEC can, in fact, uh, provide uh, clean power, clean water in a totally uh, sustainable manner. Well, let's change gears here for a second. You know, I was reading about you guys are starting to penetrate the, the Philippines over there. Right now, they're getting ready to run out of fossil fuels. Uh, I think they they got one-third of the renewable energy looking to go to another uh, 90% of that. What's your game plan over there in the Philippines? We've been working with a um, representative of the uh, Philippine government as well as business leaders in the Philippines. In fact, some of our shareholders are actually Philippine-Americans. And that is where this uh, introduction came from. Um, the Philippines is uh, a great country for OTEC. They have uh, near perfect conditions, uh, just like the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, they've already got OTEC on the statute books, uh, including OTEC power as part of the renewable energy solution. Uh, so we're pretty advanced in our discussions there. Um, the Philippines, as you may know, uh, are a collection of many hundreds of different islands. Uh, a lot of those islands don't have any power at all, and neither do they have uh, fresh water. That's something which surprised me when I looked at that as a particular project. But right now, our consultants in the Philippines are moving forward, uh, presenting information to the government, uh, to thought leaders and stakeholders in the Philippines, uh, and we uh, hope to have some very good news uh, on an OTEC plant for the Philippines in the not-too-distant future. You know, there's so many companies out there that are getting into the renewable energies and have been in some, you know, some time. What makes OTEC so different than the other companies? Well, the first thing, Everett, is that, you know, wind and solar power are great, and I'm a huge proponent, as you can imagine, of anything renewable and sustainable. Uh, there's no bad uh, renewable and sustainable power or solution in my mind. But the difference with OTEC power is that we're 24 seven. We don't need the wind to blow or the sun to shine uh, in order to create our electricity. We provide a constant 24 seven supply of electricity 365 days a year. And as I mentioned earlier, OTEC can also be used to produce great volumes of fresh drinking water uh, used for fish farming and other types of food production and economic development. I mean, we recently signed uh, a memorandum of understanding with American Samoa, which is an American territory. Uh, and one of the things that was interesting for them is the economic development and the production of water. With the rise in sea level, a lot of islands uh, are finding that the aquifers are getting um, infiltrated by uh, salt water from the sea, which means that the drinking water that some of these islands relied upon through wells and things of that nature are no longer possible. Um, that's also the case, by the way, uh, uh, in countries uh, in Africa, Ghana, yes. for example recently came out with a report that none of the water in Ghana is going to be drinkable in 30 years. That's because of pollution, not, nothing to do with the infiltration of salt water. So those are the things, you know, that we're, we're, you know, we're different. We have a unique package of energy, water, and food, the basic necessities for all humans, in fact. So that means that we can provide communities around the world with sustainable independence based upon their most abundant local resource, the ocean. Here on Stock Day, we are highlighting the Ocean Thermal Energy Corp. They trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol CPWR. Again, stock price is 20 cents, even though they are in pre-revenues. I think that uh, you could get ahead of the curve line at a stock price at 20 cents here. In closing, uh, Jeremy, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to touch upon that you would like to illustrate to my listeners? Well, I would just say that uh, we have a number of impact investors who are already supporting uh, the mission of our company, which is to improve the lives of millions of people worldwide. That's something which, uh, you know, I as the lead investor here 
set my heart on when I first got involved in this company back in 2010. Um, we've generated a robust pipeline of global customers and projects for OTEC around the world. We, there isn't a month that goes past ever that we don't get inquiries from governments or from uh, people that are interested in what we're doing. Um, so, you know, if you look at, you know, the renewable energy mandates globally, where they're going, the turmoil uh, in terms of uh, the volatility of oil pricing and so on and so forth, our, our technology and our mission is essential uh, to improve the lives of millions of people worldwide. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Hopefully you'll come back on 40 or 50 days. Give us an update on ocean thermal energy and let us know what's going on. Thank you, Everett. It's a pleasure to be here. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or this station.